of Shiloh Baptist Church, one church in two locations. I am so glad you decided to join us. Check out our program, check out our viral worship, check out our church in general. There are a lot of great things ha happening at Shiloh. Please go to our website and see some of the great activities that we are doing here uh, in our area. Some of the things that we are doing to reach people for Christ. We are a kingdom church who believes in kingdom building, who is helping to change people's lives. Check out the message today. Go to our website. Check out our other messages. We are so glad to make you a friend of Shiloh Baptist Church. God bless you. This is Pastor Duncan saying, have a blessing. Somebody told me that Jesus will chapter 17. There I said it. And to all you Bible, uh, those that know the word of God, all you theologians, you know when we go to 1 Samuel 17, we're going to be talking about David. Now, 
Don't think you know all that you need to know about David and Goliath. There is some revelation, some thoughts that God has brought to my heart that I just want to share with you. So again, 1 Samuel chapter 17, and we're going to start at verse 16 of this familiar text. When you have it, say amen. I just got your virtual amen. Let's read. For 40 days, verse 16, the Philistine came forward every morning and evening and took his stand. Now Jesse said to his son David, take this ephod of roasted grain and these 10 loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to their camp. Take along these 10 cheeses to the commander of the unit. See how your brothers are and bring back some assurance from them. They are with Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Elah, fighting against the Philistines. Early in the morning, David left the flock in the care of a shepherd, loaded up and set out. As Jesse had directed, he reached the camp as the army was going into its battle positions, shouting a war cry. Israel and the Philistines were drawing up their lines to face each other. David left his things with the keeper of the supplies, ran to the battle lines, and asked his brothers how they were. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped up out of his lines and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. Whenever the Israelites saw the man, they all fled from him in great fear. Now the Israelites had been saying, do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will have great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. David asked the men standing near, what will be done for the man who kills the Philistine and removes his disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that should defy the armies of the living God? Right there, right there is enough. I'm going to speak this morning from a thought, the call to courage. You have been called to courage. I'm going to talk about a call to courage. Today we're going to talk about an indispensable quality of character that every believer needs if they're going to fulfill the plan and purpose that God has for them. This indispensable character gives us the ability to tap into the supernatural power of God, overcome any obstacle, and conquer the giants that confront us. Today, we are going to talk about courage. That's right, courage. Now, I know this seems trivial, but it is not. Do you know that being courageous is not a walk in the park? Having courage means that you have to confront some of the strongest demonic spirits that the enemy uses against our fallen nature. What am I talking about? Fear and worry and unbelief and doubt and arrogance. Now, there's a lot of saints who are sidelined by these Christians, by these spirits, and they've been taken out. Matter of fact, I want to talk about one, the spirit of fear. We're all familiar with it. The spirit of fear, because it's one of the most common emotions. Fear will is destructive and will take us out. As a matter of fact, when people talk about fear, they usually attach uh, some modifiers or some adjectives to show you how deadly fear is and what it can release on us. What am I talking about? We talk about paralyzing fear. We talk about weakening fear. We talk about debilitating fear because fear can do all of those things in our life. And not only that, when we start fearing all the time or when fear gets a hold on us, then it becomes...
becomes irrational. Listen to me, irrational fear will take you out because you won't know how to get the fear out of your heart. Matter of fact, psychologists have had 200 different types of phobias. See, when fear gets to the place that fear is in control and you're not, it becomes a phobia. And phobias can really destroy us because we have no ability to control them. What am I talking about? Three famous phobias. You know acrophobia, the fear of heights. And then we talk about claustrophobia, the fear of close spaces. And then nicophobia, the fear of darkness. A lot of us are running around with these fears in our life, but I got some good news this morning. You don't have to fear or worry because my God has already given us weapons against fear. I know there's some successful, victorious Christians out there who can tell you they overcame fear. And you know how we did it? By the word of God. There's some powerful words. Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee by the word of my righteousness. Remember what Paul had to tell Timothy, Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 and 7. He said, Timothy, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. I know some days it may not seem like your mind is sound, but if we hold on to that scripture, we'll get it. And don't forget David in Psalms 34 and 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. We got to understand, I just talked about fear, but I could have talked about all of those negative things that confront us. I could have talked about uh, fear and worry. I could have talked about worry and negativity and unbelief and doubt. And I could have told you their characteristics and how God has given us scriptures to overcome them. But that's not where your strength is. Here's what I want to talk about. None of the scriptures that I talked about will do you any good if you don't have the courage to use them. Courage is the key to life. Courage is the key to us getting through our situations. There's not a real saint among us who have not been attacked and had to go through a night of generalized fear and anxiety trying to take down their shield of faith and destroy their peace. And they held on to the word of God. That is what courage is. Courage is not the absence of fear. But many believers have fallen because they don't realize you're going to be fearful, but you still got to learn how to stand. What am I talking about? Many saints have lost it because they had faith. The Bible's full of examples of saints who had faith, but when they were confronted with something, they didn't have enough courage to use the faith they had. And they fell. So faith will do you no good without courage. Waiting on the Lord. We know the scriptures. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. But the problem is, many of us, when our mind is running away from us and the enemy has an attack coming from the right and from the left, many of us lose our ability to wait because we don't have the courage to stand there and wait through those situations. Speaking of standing, the one of the most powerful scriptures we started this broadcast with it is stand still. Do you know, I think God designed stand still so he could show us how we can get through our circumstances. He says, stand still and know that I am God. The only way you're going to stand still is if you have the courage to stand there while the enemy is constantly bombarding you while problems are attacking you from left right and all over but you got to learn it takes courage i'm talking about being called to courage we like what's going on in our christian life when everything is going well but did you know if you don't have a foundation of courage it won't do you any good speaking of that praisers oh man we love to talk about at midnight paul and silas sang praises unto the Lord. They were sitting there praising God. They could have died the next morning, beheaded by excruciating death. And yet, I don't know what got in Paul's mind to say, hey, Silas, let's sing a praise song right now. And they began to sing praises unto the Lord. And when we hear that through a preach sermon, we start clapping and saying, hallelujah. But how many of us could stand up in our worst hour, not knowing what tomorrow is going to be and really be strong enough to have the courage to worship when life is falling apart. No, you got to understand the only way you're going to make it through this life with your call 
came a call to courage from our Lord. Let me show you some things people who overcame and learned how to overcame. Winston Churchill said, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. But it is the courage to continue that keeps you going to the victory. Nelson Mandela, one of my heroes, I learned, here's what he said, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not the one who does not fear, but he who conquers the fear that he's going through. And Nelson Mandela ought to know what he's talking about. 27 years in an African prison. And then of course, Dr. Martin Luther King, courage, is an inner resolution to go forward despite the obstacles. Cowardice is submissive surrender to your circumstances. Oh, I like that. Let me say that again. Cowardice, if you're, if you're a Christian and you let cowardice enter you, it is submitting and surrendering to your circumstances. Dr. King says, but courage breeds creativity and life. But I like looking at all the famous people, what they said, but look to the word of God. One of my life scriptures, my church knows this, Joshua 1 and 9. Watch what God said. I commanded you. We think about this. Have I not commanded you to have courage and be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid. Be not dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Courage also defeats our enemies. Deuteronomy 31, 6, be strong and of a good courage. Don't be afraid of them. Oh, I just blessed somebody right there. Listen, I don't know what you're struggling with right now, but did you hear God just whisper in your spirit, don't be afraid of them? And then Matthew, I think it's 27, no, 14, 27 says, Jesus was walking on the water to his disciples. Yeah, his disciples. And yet he had to tell them, be of good cheer. That's King James, but the word is translated, be of good courage, it is I. I like that because God is saying whenever you go through something, always remember, just like fear is there, just like worry is there, just like struggle is there, God said he is there. That's shouting stuff right there to realize that I'm sitting up allowing this fear and worry to worry me when I know my God is standing right there to bless me. My brothers and sisters, we're going into this powerful text, and I want you to know that Today, this is an essential teaching. David's going to show us what it means and how, how to get through some of those circumstances in our life. Can I tell you this? You can even go back and redeem some of the battles you lost if you get courage today. Don't you understand that? If the courage rises up in you that you were called to, you are going to be blessed. This 16-year-old boy who was a shepherd, who loved the Lord, is going to teach us what it means to have courage when no one else had courage to face the giant. Come on, go with me. Don't lose me. You're going to face your giant. Three points I like to tell you. Realize that you've been called to a battle. Recommit to fight the battle. And rely on God in the battle. Let's talk about it. Where we are in 1 Samuel, that's right, I need you to know so you can have a context for the blessing God is going to give us. We found out that the people had asked for a king. Samuel, who was the last judge, had found himself now in a position that he was angry that the people did not want God. They had asked for a king, and God sent them Saul. And you know what? Saul started out as a pretty good king, but then when really pressure got applied to him, we found out he was envious, and he was jealous, and, and he didn't make good decisions. As a matter of fact, as we lead up to this chapter, how we got to God even having to anoint David is because of all of Saul's the what am I talking about? Right after he got in the office, he had a battle against the Philistines where he decided, I'm talking about chapter 12 of 1 Samuel, he decided he's going to go ahead and do a sacrifice before the priest gets there. And Samuel warned him then and said, Saul, right now you, you might lose the kingdom. You keep on not doing what God told you to do. Then we go from chapter 12 to chapter 13 where we find out that uh, that's when he found out he was doomed for the monarchy. Chapter 14, we found out Jonathan, Saul was starving his troops. And Jonathan said, uh, I'm going to eat some honey and we're going to go over to the garrison. Saul told everybody, stand still. He didn't have a faith. He was really fearful. 
And then Jonathan and his aide went across and killed 20 Philistines and won the battle. And watch this. Saul wanted to kill his own son. Chapter 15. We know this chapter. That's when Samuel said, God said, go kill all the Amalekites. And when he got there, he, showed, he kept a few choice cattle, saved some people alive, and said the people did it. And that's when God said, you are now going to lose the kingdom. He took the kingdom from God. I can't stay here this sermon because that's not what this is about. But obedience is also courage. you got to be strong enough to do what God says no matter what's going on in your life. Then chapter 16, here it is. God sent Samuel to anoint David. And he had to go in secret because Saul would have killed him if he knew about it. And then after he anointed David, David had to go because an evil spirit from the Lord came to Saul. David was in the palace singing and playing music over the evil spirit. Then we get to chapter 17, which starts us off on the text. Watch this. They were standing in the valley of Elah. There was a mountain on the left that the Philistines stood on. There was a mountain on the right that the Israelites stood on. And as they stood on this mountain with the valley below... That's when Goliath would come every day and offer his challenge. Now, Goliath was well over nine feet, two inches long, had a sword and a spear and a shield to match that. And it says he stood up and issued a challenge. He said, hey, I am for the Philistines. You are for Saul. Come out. Send me a man to fight with me. If we win, you'll be our servants. If you win, we'll be your servants. Don't be afraid. Send me somebody to fight with me. And we found out that everyone was fearful. What am I talking about? Man, do you know that you, one of the main weapons of the enemy is to demoralize his opponent. What am I talking about? That people know that if they can talk into your spirit, uh, back in the day, well, we call it tough talking. If somebody can talk tough, sometimes you can talk tough. You may not have to fight at all. But I want you to know talk toughers don't mean they're really tough. And I found this out when I found that there were people we thought was tough until somebody called their bluff. I remember this one time in our capital. Cafeteria East at Bristol High School, there was this small guy who was getting bullied and his lunch money taken every day. And so he went home and his dad and mom found out and his dad said to him, if you come home without your lunch money again, I'm going to beat you and you're not going to get any more. Can I park for old school parents right there? I know some of y'all new school parents don't know nothing about no beatings, but they see said I'm going to beat you. And I'm not going to give you any more money. Well, look what happened. The boy went back to school. And sure enough, here comes a tough guy, tough talking. Give me your lunch money. He looked at him and said, no, I had enough. The bully jumped. And this boy, God is my witness, sitting in the house of God. He beat that boy down. He grabbed the tray and was beating him. We had to grab him off of him. And the boy ended up in the clinic. That's how badly he beat him. All I'm saying to you is that's what the devil does to you. He bombards your mind with tough talk. He knows he's defeated, but what he does is works on your heart. He tries to tell you what he's going to do to you, how he's going to kill you. And a lot of saints have fallen down because the enemy has talked and you got scared. Talk and stole your courage. But I want you to know, since you know he is defeated, what you ought to do is let him know you're not taking anything else out of my house. You're not taking anything else from my family. You ought to tell him what this little guy said. You ought to go to him when he comes to you and say, this is what my daddy said. What am I talking about? When the enemy comes to you and say, I'm going to make you sick. You ought to say, well, my daddy said, if I call for the elders of the church, the prayer of faith can raise them up and I can be healed. When he says, I'm getting ready to kill you, you ought to say, well, my daddy said. He is the resurrection and the life. And so even if I die, to die is gain, to live is Christ. When he comes to say, I'm going to take your money, you ought to tell him, my God, my daddy said, shall supply all my needs according to his riches. When he says he's going to mess with your family, you ought to stop him right there and say, no, I pray over my kids. I pray over my family. I pray over my house. And you know what the Bible says? The prayers of the righteous avail much. So you better back up, Satan. You're not coming. Because my dad said, if I stand up, all your tough talk can't stop his angels from being around me. Can't stop his blessings from keeping me. I am a living witness. Have I got one out there that understands if I hold on, God's blessing is going to bring me through. Then the text says, for 40 days, Goliath kept coming. Verse 11 says, 
And when they heard it, they were paralyzed with fear. All I want to say about that part, because they don't want to go, is if you don't fight back, the enemy is going to continue until you stop. Realize you've been called to a battle. I want to help you today. Verse 20 tells us, enter David. I read it to you. His father sent him to take some food to his brothers. He was home doing being a shepherd. Everyone else was at the, was at the battle. His three brothers, uh, Eliab, uh, Abner, and, and Shema. Shema was all at the battle. And they all went to follow Saul, but they all heard Goliath and they were all fearful. Enter David's call. I need you to know something. This is what David was called for. Stop. That's what you were called for. The battle you're fighting now is the battle God anointed you to fight. So right now, there's nothing really the enemy can do unless you give him your courage. Because the reality is, God had anointed him in chapter 16, raised him up so he could now be David, who was one day going to be king. You were anointed and called to a battle. That's our problem. Our problem is we get used to the good life. When we serve a good God, we get used to blessings and miracles, and we start thinking about all the things God has done. Tears come down our face. We begin to cry and thank God. But then when a battle does come up or some, a situation does come up that's stealing our courage or messing with our life, we act like we don't have time. Get mad at God. I don't have time to be sick right now, God. God, why me? I don't have time for this to be happening right now. Lord, what? No. Why my money? What about my job? And we start complaining and forget you were called to a battle. You weren't called just to walk around with the good life. The good life is your fight. Come on. Revelation 12 and verse 11 says this. One of my favorite scriptures because I live by this. It says, and, and that's the end of time. Revelation 12. When the, when the believers are taken up in heaven. Chapter 12 says, and they overcame. The word actually is conquered. They conquered by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Did you hear that? See, we want a testimony without a test. We want the, the good stuff without the battle. We don't want no tears. We just want to have all the blessings. But how many know a good saint has had tears flowing down their face while they're trying to praise God? Right now, your heart is being attacked, but you're holding your ground, blessing God anyhow, because God wants us to know we've been called to a battle. And if you are like me, you have been in many of them, and now you understand what the Bible is saying. The kingdom of God suffereth violent, but the violent will take it by course. You don't know what violence is? Mess with my family. Mess with my wife. Mess with my stuff. Knowing who I am in God. I know who I am now, Satan. You can't mess with me. Somebody out there, you better shake yourself. You better listen to me this morning and understand something. You got to get violent sometimes. What do I mean by violent? I'm not telling you to break any laws. I'm telling you get violent with the word of God. I'm telling you to say, my God. I'm telling you to worship God until your blessing comes true. You got up, oh, somebody just got it. When you're laying in your bed in the midnight hour and that devil got the nerve to knock on your door, you better let him know every time. No, I said every time you come to the Duncan's house, you're going to have to fight up in this piece because we're going to get violent with the word of God and not let you steal or take anything from us. We wrestle. Not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. And here's the catch. Do you realize when you, you know, getting that, that good life stuff, when you were first called, there was something wrong with you? There was something wrong with all of us? We had wrong thinking, wrong philosophy, problems galore. Maybe some of us were drinkers or, or smokers, or whatever we did. But did you know none of that could stop us? from getting set free by the word of God. As a matter of fact, our first, when we first got saved, we were strong, what? Knock on my door, praise is coming out. Lead me to the church, I'm worshiping God. But when we get used to it, we forget to have courage and we forget it's a battle. So the first thing is you've been called to courage. You have a calling, with your calling is courage. And if you look at this, uh, David asked the men, who is this defying? God, the kingdom of God. Uh, I like this because he said, how are you going to defy my God 
whom I love. The next way you get your courage, oh, you better write this down. You got to realize courage comes because the attack really isn't against you. The attack is a personal attack on God. Can you see that spiritually? He said, David didn't look at it as Goliath challenging him. He said, who is he to defy my God? You want to talk about some strength and courage coming in your life? Start thinking, I got to hold up for God. What am I talking about? The enemy loves, that's what this is. You have entered a cosmic battle that has been going on for years, and the devil wants to show God up. So what he does is take some of God's choice servants. Come on, I'm talking about you, the ones he blessed, the ones he delivered, the ones he brought a long way. And he says, I'm going to get them in a situation, God, where they will not only be fearful, they will deny you. And you know. We would not even be in a falling condition if Adam and Eve only had one command, had followed that one command of God. And the devil loved the fact they were kicked out of the garden, not knowing that God had a plan of redemption already. But what am I telling you? I'm telling you that the devil wants to show God off. Say, God, look, you died for nothing. I, I know you blessed them last month. Look at them. They won't even stand. All I'm telling you is show that devil he is a liar. I will not allow myself to get in a position where I do not bless my God. Every time the enemy asks me who it is that brought me where I am, I'm going to say God did it. Every time I get in a situation, I'm going to look to the Lord. How many know that I want to bring God glory? Are there any glory folk that know if I can just let God look down and get glory out of my life, I will be blessed. But if you let him take your courage, you will dishonor God. You, the one he blessed all these years, the one you talk about, you love him. You'll dishonor him because you won't operate in courage. The devil was having a yard sale. I need you to see this. And in his yard sale, he was selling all these weapons to the rest of the imps and the rest of the demons. And he said, oh, yeah, you can buy that. That's anger over there. Uh, you can buy that. That's pride over there. You can buy that. That's sin right there. He said, oh, that's a good one. And then the devil had this one box in the back of the yard sale. And he said, uh, I want to buy that. One of them said, can I buy that? And the devil said, no, 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 no. You can't have that box. What am I talking about? He said, in that box is the sure fire work that will destroy any human being. I can't sell you that one. That's my number one weapon that always works. I have seen tongue talkers, church pew jumpers. I've seen those praisers fall by this weapon. I saved that for those holy rollers. So the imp said, well, what's in that box? And the devil said, discouragement. If I can get a saint to be discouraged, oh no, blessings all around him. But if I can get them to be discouraged, they will stop worshiping God. David said, who is this coming against the armies of God? So it's not only are you in a battle, it's a personal attack against God. Then there's going to be a personal attack from others against you for trying to stand. I'm not going to stay here long because everybody always talking about how bad the church is. But I'm not talking about church now. I'm talking about individuals who you hang with. Look what happened. Verse 28, when Eliab, David's brother, heard him speaking, he got angry. And he accused David of three things. I couldn't believe this. His own brother, because he saw David with some courage. First of all, what you need to know is the reason you can't hang with everybody, because everybody does not respect your calling. That's right there. Look what he said. Who did you leave those sheep with? Why are you out here? What he was trying to say is, you're nothing but a little sheep herder. How are you going to win a battle? Oh, you got, you got people like that who will come up to you and say, who do you think you are? You don't count. You're, you're nothing. And yet they don't realize in God's eyes, I'm already somebody. I just got to have it in my spirit. Look what he said then. He said, I know you. You conceded. And, and I know your spirit. So next they'll say, they'll try to say they, don't, they want to uh, disrespect your confidence. Ooh, you don't know people who get mad because you're not mad? Or get mad because you don't give up? Or get mad because you're standing on the word of God and they want you to deny the word of God. That's because they don't understand your confidence. So they want to cut you down because they feel bad. They want you to feel bad. And then the last thing he said was, you only came to watch. Now that was the farthest 
from the mistake. He said, you only came to watch. No, David was on assignment from God. Sometimes, oh man, I feel the anointing right here. Sometimes people don't know how your assignment is burning on the inside of you. They're looking at you as just being you. But on the inside, you got an assignment from God that you can't even articulate to some folk because you know they will cut it down. But here's the key when you get a personal attack from others against yourself. Don't listen to them. Real courage is when you follow your dreams from your heart because you know God said them. I'm going to say that again to somebody. Stay in your ground. Real courage with when you know that God told you to do this. Other folk may not see it because God didn't give them that assignment, but God told you to do it. What am I talking about? Joshua and Caleb. That's right. Everybody bought a bad report. You hold on. And you were the only ones who were delivered. What am I talking about, Daniel? I know you got thrown into the lion's den, but you refused to listen to other folk, and you got a blessing from the Lord. Everybody who stood their ground, blind by the mask, everybody told you to shut up, but now you can see. Listen to me. Whenever you're in this battle, it's going to be a personal attack against God, a personal attack against you, and then you got to recommit the battle. Look what happened next, David, when he said that, repeated it again. I like David. He wasn't scared. And then it said the words got to Saul. Do you realize how did David become a shepherd boy to standing in the king's palace? I believe God opens doors that nobody can close. How did you get to where you are right now? You didn't get there on your own strength. The smartest person understands that. It's because I would have never dreamed I could be where I am, but God Open door. David was coming to bring some food, ended up being a warrior. How do you come from a shepherd to a warrior to standing in front of the king? It's because David was ready to recommit himself to the battle. I got to get you to see this. David was already a fighter. And here's what David said. When he got to Saul, Saul said, you can't fight Goliath. He said, you're nothing but a little boy. And watch what he said. He said, no, you don't understand, Saul. I got some past victories that I remember. Here's how you recommit to the battle. You might be standing somewhere now while the devil is stealing your courage, but I dare you to go back and remember the battles God already brought you through. Remember the tears you already cried. Remember the time that you were struggling and God held you up. Remember the time you were so fearful. Come on, two, three days running around, panicky, anxiety, but you held on to God and God delivered you. Remember how God was faithful even when you were not. Here's what he said. He said, I need you to understand something, so watch this. He said, I want you to know that uh, when I was sitting out there in that field by myself, ah, I got hurt because I can't keep stopping. Thank you, tell me, Holy Spirit. Look, sometimes the best blessings is not when you're with other folk. And when you're by yourself, David said, I was sitting in that field by myself, and a lion came. God slew the lion. A bear came. God helped me slew the bear. Now, I like these kind of people. I always tell people, watch out for them. You ever seen somebody, if you do something good, they'll say, well, the Lord, you know, the Lord did it. Give the glory to God. Look, what they're trying to do is belittle your part in it. I'm trying to help you today. God did it, but he needed me to have courage so he can do it. All I'm telling you is don't sit there and let people tell you it's easy. There's a God part and there's a you part. You got to have the courage so God can work through you. If David didn't have the courage, God could not have defeated anything. But David was willing to trust God. And I like this verse. He said, and saw that same God who delivered me from the lion and the bear will deliver me from Goliath. You got to make sure you understand the same God that got you 10 years ago is still God now. I want you to see something here that will bless you. It says, Saul said, okay, David, you can go. And he put him in his armor. And, and David tried him on. And David finally said, I can't go in these. What am I telling you? The next thing you got to remember about recommitting to the battle, don't switch up in the middle of the battle. Don't try to put on something that is not, look, Go home with the girl you brought with you. Leave with the man that got you where you are. Don't sit around and flip up in the party. Look, you don't know who you're going home with. All I'm telling you is, if faith got you that far, you better stick with faith. If praying has blessed your family, you better stick with your prayers. If, if praising God early in the morning, maybe somebody else doesn't. But if that's got you peace of mind, 
Get out of bed, get on your knees, and praise God early in the morning. All I'm telling you is don't flip up. David had enough sense to say, I can't wear somebody else's clothes. Sometimes we'll have faith and we'll flip. There was this traveler that came from the east, and, and we're about to close. Came from the east, watch this, guys. And he made it out west by faith. Was a praying man, trusted God. But when he got to the Mississippi River, it was frozen. And there were people telling him, you can't make it across. So he switched from trusting God. How he got there? Trusting God. He switched from trusting God to listening to people. And then he found himself, well, I got to get through there. He looked at the ice. The ice looked firm. So he stuck his foot out. And then he stuck his hand out. And then, can you see him? He's creeping across the ice. And then he turned around and heard some noise. Heard some singing come every find him. He turned around and there was a man driving a full team of horses with a wagon loaded down with supplies past him on the same ice he was creeping on. What am I talking about? If you stick to where you, what brought you where you are, you'll be blessed. If you stop, you're going to find yourself creeping. Now, you see, I used to be, this was a blessing. Now you're creeping because you lost your courage and you flipped up. David said, no, Saul, I haven't proven them. Last point, rely on God in the battle. Not only must you realize that you're called to a battle, not only must you recommit to the battle, you have to rely on God in the battle. Look what happened. David left and did what he had always done. He picked up five smooth stones. You know, you heard everybody else say that he picked up five stones because Goliath had some brothers. Maybe the other four stones were for Goliath's four brothers. And he picked up the stones and he put them in his back. Meanwhile, Goliath came running at David with his spear. And when he saw David, he said, wait a minute, am I a dog? You bringing this young boy? Who am I that you're going to send it? And they, he started cursing David in his gods, the scripture says. And David, and then he said, come on. I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds of the air and the fowls of the field. Come on, I'm going to tear you up. And all of a sudden, David did not get fearful. Oh, come on. Oh, you tough folk. Nine foot tall man with 500 pounds of heavy battle armor on with a long spear and a sword and a shield. And here he is now telling you he's about to destroy you. I've seen folk fall for less. But look what David did. And I'm closing. Watch these things. These points will bless you. David said, you come against me. I want you to know that the last leg of courage is you got to be sold out to the Lord. And you got to rely on God because you're not reliable. Can I say that again? I will stand here first and tell you as pastor, as a man of God, I'm not reliable without my God on my side. So here's what he said. David said, you come at me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin. He said, I'm coming at you. In the name of the Lord. I want you to see how many times David used the Lord in his attack. He said, you come at me with a spear, shield, and javelin, I'm coming at you with the name of the Lord. There's power in the name of the Lord. If you want to have courage, then you want to attack the devil with the name of the Lord. There's some saints just like me that just hear God and it brings total relief. I heard the psalmist say, as the deer panted after the water brook, so panted my soul. Soul is thirsty for you, God. If you ever had relief from God, you understand that. Then he looked at David, and David said, and also, you're coming, but I need you to know that my God will deliver you into my hands this day. So David said, not only is the name of God powerful, my God is a deliverer. He will deliver. Next time you're under attack and fear is approaching you, I dare you to start thinking in your mind, my God will deliver me. He is a deliverer. And what I like about what David said, he will deliver me today. Somebody ought to claim their deliverance today. And then the last thing David said is all throughout the scripture, he said, and so the world will see, those around, that God doesn't save with a spear and a sword and a shield. But he saves because he's God and the battle belongs to the Lord. David said, my God is a deliverer. My God has a powerful name and my God is the one who fights the battle. You want to have courage? I'm telling you right now, please take that uh, uh, battle off your back. 
and give it back to the Lord. Please take that battle off of your shoulders and give it back to God. And it says, the Philistine ran to attack. David reached in, grabbed one stone, lodged it deep in his forehead, and he fell back. The world was shocked. I wasn't. I wasn't shocked because I read it. I wasn't shocked because I'm also a believer in God. What David said is, you need to learn how to rely on the Lord. The scripture says, David was triumphant. And since David didn't have a sword, this part I don't understand, but it was supernatural also. He ran on top of Goliath's body, grabbed that shit sword out of his sheet, and cut off his head. I don't know how he picked the heavy sword up, but that's another thing God does. He gives us strength when we need it. And it said, the rest of the Philist Philistines ran. The enemy will run when you realize that courage, and you were called courage. Saints of God, I'm done, but you need to understand something. Realize you were called to a battle. Keep your courage. You were anointed that to win the battle you're in. And if you recommit to the battle, every time you find yourself lax, recommit. I'm getting ready to fight. And then rely on God as David did in the battle. Don't flip up. Don't change. Trust God. Three-year-old Todd had never flown a kite. But his dad kept telling him, this kite's going to fly. The boy was saying, I don't see how. They're going to the park. And they ran to the park. And as they got there, his dad said, don't worry, Todd, it'll fly. And they unraveled the string. And the wind caught the kite. And it began to fly. And what Todd said next just warmed the heart of his father. He said, Dad, it's flying. I knew it would, just like you said. Do you know what would happen if the next time you get in a struggle, you tell God, I'm making it, just like you said. I'm going to get out, just like you said. Brothers and sisters, stand, have courage. You've been called to be strong. So don't fear and why I gotta be strong. Stand in courage and you will get the victory. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father God, I thank you tonight that this morning, God, that you have been a blessing, that you have made a way for us. And if you're not saved, I want you to pray this prayer. This is Pastor Duncans. I am here in our Port Norris location, and I have some great news for you. You know, I, I don't know why God does this. Well, and then again, I do know why God does this, but I just started my series in the Psalms when all of a sudden, you know, I believe that the Word of God needs to be relevant, that the Word of God needs to make sense, that the Word of God needs to reflect the needs of the people. And even though I love the Psalms, right in the middle of the Psalms, God now has me doing a switch. I need you to tune in Wednesday night. You don't want to miss this. Here's what I want to say to you. What about if these are the good old days? What about if things don't get any better? Are these the last days? What about if they never find a cure? More people die. Uh, no cures in sight right now. What about if the food supply and the 
chains where we get our resources fall apart and supermarkets doesn't have anything and jobs go continually go and the economy breaks and falls. I'm gonna say this. What I'm telling you is God told me to do a message, a series entitled How to Survive, How to Be Victorious in this pandemic, how to live tough during this pandemic. I want to talk to you about the prophetic nature of the days we're living in and how you can produce a quality life under that pressure. Look, all I want you to do is tune in to this new series. You'll see one of our commercials. And I'm telling you, this is something straight from the heart of God. We will find out prophetically where we are in the Bible and where we are in our heart and where we are as far as God keeping us as believers. Tune in. Don't forget, living tough in the pandemic. God bless you. This is Pastor Duncan. I'll see you Wednesday night. Take it to him and leave it there. I was down with no way up and I needed some help. Everybody breathing but not living, just existing. Well, and I needed some help Somebody told me that Jesus Will set you free I tried it for myself And now I know What he did